Is it time to quit metformin? You're doing everything right, but your blood sugar isn't improving. You feel bloated, nauseous, or exhausted. Or maybe your doctor just mentioned your kidney numbers are a little off. So how do you know when it's time to stop taking metformin, and how do you do it safely? In this video, I'll break down the top seven signs that metformin may not be right for you anymore, what to watch out for, and what to do if it's time. To move on without risking your health, I'm a licensed pharmacist, and I help make health advice simple and easy to follow. If you've been following our metformin series, you'll remember we just talked about side effects no one warns you, about like B12 deficiency and muscle loss. Now we're taking it a step further, because for some people the best move might be to stop metformin altogether. So how do you know when to quit? Let's walk through it, one sign at a time. Sign number one, your blood sugar isn't improving. If your A1C hasn't gone down, or your fasting glucose is still running high after several months, your body may not be responding to metformin like it should. That's a sign it might be time to adjust or switch. Sign number two, you're dealing with constant side effects. Nausea, diarrhea, bloating, or stomach cramps that don't go away, even after the first few weeks, could mean metformin is not a good fit for your system. And side effects that disrupt your day-to-day -day life aren't something you should just deal with. Sign number three, you're losing too much weight. Sure, metformin can help with weight loss, but losing weight too fast or without trying can leave you weak and undernourished. It's a clue your metabolism might be shifting too far in the wrong direction. Sign number four, your kidney function is declining. Metformin is processed through the kidneys. If your labs show reduced kidney function, metformin can build up in your system and become dangerous. That's when doctors usually recommend reducing the dose or stopping completely. Sign number five, you've had symptoms of lactic acidosis. This is rare, but serious. If you're feeling extreme fatigue, muscle pain, shortness of breath, or confusion, you need to contact your doctor immediately. These could be signs of a medical emergency linked to metformin buildup. Sign number six, you're about to have a scan with contrast dye. For CTs, MRIs, or angiograms that use contrast, you'll often need to stop metformin temporarily. This helps reduce the risk of kidney stress after the procedure. And sign number seven, it just doesn't fit your health plan anymore. Maybe your doctor is recommending a GLP-1 like Ozempic. Maybe you're switching to insulin. Or maybe your focus is now on PCOS, anti-aging, or fertility. Whatever the reason, metformin might not be the best tool for your goals anymore. But here's the most important part. Don't stop metformin suddenly on your own. That can cause your blood sugar to spike and leave you without any support. Instead, work with your doctor to create a plan. They may lower your dose gradually or switch you to something new based on your lab work and health history. And yes, there are alternatives. From GLP-1s like Ozempic to SGLT2 inhibitors to lifestyle-based approaches for PCOS and insulin resistance there are plenty of ways to move forward safely. So, is it time to quit metformin? Maybe, but the decision should always be guided by your body, your lab work, and a conversation with your healthcare provider. In our next episode, we're diving into a serious question. What if your metformin is contaminated? That's not... Clickbait, some batches were actually recalled by the FDA. We'll show you how to check your pills and protect yourself. So, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. If this video helped you understand metformin a little better, give it a like, leave a comment, and hit that subscribe button for more clear, honest health advice, right here on Pharmacist Online. See you in the next one.